Disassembly of a FLIR C5. Okay, so the first thing to come off of a FLIR C5 is the back. So this, um, this rubber back cover is held on by typical smartphone glue. So a lot of heat, soft heat, and then careful prying will make it pop off. Of course, I broke the plastic bezel. This FLIR C5 was bricked and would not start with the white bar just stopping at around the 30% mark. Um, after that rubber case comes um, the screen, which sits on like this. Just like the rubber bezel on the back, um, the screen is also held on by smartphone glue. So heat that, pry at that, and then this ribbon cable will pop off uh, without too much trouble from this part on the motherboard. Um, this plastic piece here then comes off next. So this is uh, here and unscrews, also is glued on with smartphone glue. So lots and lots of that uh, kind of electronics adhesive. Now, I tried disconnecting the battery and seeing if that maybe, you know, unplug the battery, work the power button for a few seconds and see if uh, the next boot would, uh, would see progress on that white status bar, you know, moving from left to right. No luck. There's a small button here on the motherboard right there where my fingernail is that is clickable, but no combinations of that button being pressed and um, and the battery being disconnected the power button tried a lot of different combinations to see if maybe it could sort of reboot itself to uh, to some state where it would boot. Now the last thing to do here is to take out the motherboard and or the battery to kind of get a peek at the sensor. So I'm not going to do that because really what I'm trying to do is get this darn thing to boot. So if any of you wanted to know how a FLIR C5 comes apart, there it is. A lot of heat, a lot of patience, a lot of uh, micro tool spudges. Be prepared to scratch, be prepared to break stuff, but uh, Generally, that's what the thing looks like taken apart. If anybody has any tips on how to get this thing moving, I already updated the firmware and tried all, diff all sorts of different combinations of button presses. FLIR mentioned that they're happy to receive it and fix it, but that it would probably cost more than a new unit. This one's out of warranty, so yay, thank you FLIR. I would rather try to find some way to bring it back to life, like I have done with the E6, but the next thing I'm going to try is plugging it into a computer after having pressed the motherboard button, after having unplugged the battery, and different combinations of trying to get it to be recognized by a Windows machine, and maybe some firmware and things like that. Feel free to drop any tips in the comments. See you!